Smell that? It's time for a swing dance reaction video. No. 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 Yeah! <laughs> Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Street Smart Swing. My name is Jamin Jackson, also known as the Galactic Swing Dance Umpire. <laughs> and I am super excited to be scrutinizing another swing dance video today. But first, make sure you subscribe and mash that notification button so you never miss a swing dance reaction video ever again. I tell you what, we are going to Montreal Riot uh, actually, Montreal Swing Riot 2017 Couples Battles Finals. I don't know why this is just posted uh, today, but I'm super excited to see it because I'm not sure if I've seen this one before. Uh, I heard a lot of great things about this particular format of this event. So I don't know if this is going to be like Lindy Hop versus Hip Hop or if it's going to be a Jack and Jill. We will see about it. Do not let your hearts be troubled. I will be giving you guys the absolute truth about how I feel about this competition and who should be the winner. If you are someone who gets triggered by the truth, this is not the place for you. All right, no punches will be pulled. <clears throat> oh boy. All right, I know some of these dancers already. Let's see what happens in this footage. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to tell you right now, <clears throat> the couple on the left for me by far has the most uh, uniqueness and style. <clears throat> and so they're, they're a little bit more favored for me in this uh, competition. Come on. <laughs> so I don't know if this is just one round or if this is the final so we're going to see <clears throat> okay this couple right now is already my winner just because the uh, the irregular movements the control of the body from both couples Good timing. Bless their hearts. They're uh, the other couple. <clears throat> I like their spirit, but they're getting slaughtered. There we go. <laughs> there we go. See, good surprises like that. All right. So both couples clearly know how to dance. They have the technique. So I'm not looking for that. I'm not looking if they can just do a swing out perfectly. Because perfect is the ability to do a swing out. How we look doing it is our preference. So I prefer the couple on my left. Uh, black suit, I think it's, yeah, it is Christian. Christian and Jenny, by far. <clears throat> I will say, I do, I do like what Christian and Jenny were leading and following, in addition to uh, the control that they had. So, uh, I don't know what just happened. Whoa, 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 what just happened? What just happened? So, in my mind, uh, <clears throat> I don't know who the winner was. I don't know what they were getting at the end. But clearly for me and my value system, which is, number one, determining <clears throat> the difference between what's objective and subjective, I value that number one. 
There's many people like you, you get out there and compete. You have no idea what you are being judged on. What's good? What's bad? Well, nobody knows. The only thing we do know is the part that identifies what these dancers are doing as swing dancing. That part is pretty objective. And for me, I like to define that as the control aspect of swing dancing. Can I see the leader do his role? Can I see the follower do her role? In this case, both of both of these couples were doing that. Both couples knew how to follow. Both couples knew how to lead. And I did not see uh, the leader and the followers fighting each other or basically violating their roles. And for me, that comes across as bad technique, comes across as clunkiness, comes across as insecurity in the dancing, and you can see those things. These couples did not have that. They didn't have any of those deficiencies when it comes to the 25% of Lindy Hop that's objective. And that's the part I just alluded to. Now, in terms of what I prefer, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to pick the couple on the left. That's just my subjective bias opinion. I liked them in this particular competition. I will tell you that up front, and you will never hear that from any other judge on the planet. They will never tell you why. So let me tell you why I liked them better. There are two other categories that I look for when judging. Number two for me, or I would say the second most valuable quality for me, is the ability to understand timing. People will use the word musicality. They'll say all kinds of different things and basically say they were dancing in time to the music. Now, I don't mean just on a macro level where everyone is dancing within the swing metronome. I'm talking about somewhat of, of macro musicality. And what I mean by that is the phrasing. And I'm talking dance phrasing. Every fourth eight count, the music begins to transition to do something different. Blue structure is usually on the sixth eight count. But in this case, most of these dancers were able to hear the macro musicality. They could hear when the transition was going to happen. And when it did, many of them did something different. On the couple on the right, they would choose to do something silly and goofy. And they would repeat a phrase, which I don't mind that. That's just helping the audience understand that the music is doing something different in a very you know, obvious way. My, in my opinion, it wasn't as beautiful, wasn't as unique, um, it wasn't as thought out or original uh, from the couple on the right. I didn't think that when they highlighted the musicality or the macro transition of the music, um, for the timing, it just, it just seemed redundant. A lot of those moves I've seen before, I've seen it, and it's silly, it's goofy, it's funny, particularly from those who actually did it first. But it didn't stand out to me. Now, the couple on the left, they did some things with the timing. Uh, I think inadvertently in many cases. I know uh, the guy in the black suit, his name is Christian. When they were ending their, their set, uh, he moved away from his partner. He had to spin. His legs came out. And the musician happened to be playing the note on the trombone at the same time. And there was, a, there was an audible reaction from many of the people in the audience, which I thought, that's what I'm going for. That's what I value a lot is can dancers amplify visually what we hear audibly? That's really the goal of timing for me is can I see the music? And they did that. I not only liked the fact that they could do the timing, but I also look for that third quality, and that is doing something original. That's either being yourself uh, or doing something familiar that we've seen before, but doing it a different way. Now, the couple on the left, they were familiar. They didn't do just 100% original moves I'd never seen, even the trick that they've done. I've seen stuff like that before. It was just done in a, in a unique way, so that if I saw both of these couples literally do the same moves, I would still pick the couple on the left because how they looked doing it was much more original. I liked his upright posture. I liked her relaxed responding. I liked that. Her response to uh, the fast movements was a little off sometimes. It kind of looked like she was uncomfortable moving that fast and like being super flashy. 
Um, some people just stand out more. You can tell that they don't mind like having people looking at them, having attention. But I could tell a little bit that she was just kind of like she was doing it and it was on beat, but it didn't feel like that was something that she probably would have made up. I don't know. Maybe I'm reading into it a lot, but based on what I saw from her facial expressions, and I'm talking about the lady on the left who was dancing with the leader I liked. <clears throat> I just felt sometimes it felt like eh, maybe she was just going through the motions or she wasn't feeling it as much as he was. Either way, I still picked them. I still liked them way better than the couple on the right. And that's what I would that's what I would say is they, they had the control. Both couples had that. Couple on the left had better timing when it came to those phrases. Better meaning that it wasn't just campy uh, stuff I've already seen before. They were actually attempting to do different things. But then the creativity part was the part that put it over the top for me. Just watching them do a swing out looked distinct. Watching them do some simple turns looked unique for me because I could tell by their silhouette, if I was watching it in black and white, who that couple is. I could tell it just by seeing that. I can't say that for the couple on the right. I can't 100% be honest with myself and say that I could recognize them uh, if I saw them dancing again with a black and white silhouette. I, I can't say that. So um, there you have it for me, guys. That's the winner. I had the couple on the left as my winner uh, by far, by far. So that was really, really cool to see them. I really like his dancing, and I really, I, I, I think I like his dancing more than her dancing more on this. I want to see her more... <clears throat> um, by dancing with other people because I couldn't really see Christian uh, uh, Jenny that's the name I couldn't see her much when he was when she was dancing with Christian I could see Christian doing a lot of different movements um, I could see her when they were doing the swing out I could see her a little bit more but I'm I don't really know her personality when I'm watching her I can't really see that in this to say okay what is she is she relaxed is she more is she more silly is she, I don't know I don't know what to expect so I will say. From my honest observation in this particular performance, even though I put them in first, I didn't like some of the expressions that she had. And that's just me. I mean, that doesn't dissuade me from putting them in first place. It just tells me that I probably wouldn't prefer imitating that dancer if I was learning how to follow or if I, you know, wanted to do something uh, at a different <clears throat> place or at a different event, I wouldn't seek out that person based on my own preferences, right? So that's the bias that goes into a lot of judging. You have to be able to put these things out there or by default, what's going to happen is you're going to compete and then you're not going to know what really people are looking for. And therefore, you give them all the power to determine if you're being successful or not. So I encourage you guys to compete. It will encourage you to see what your body can do under pressure. Because the more you practice, the more your body is going to basically inherit the ideas that you've been practicing and it's, it's gonna basically do those ideas naturally. And that's what you really want. And in many cases, you're not gonna be able to do that natural, I call it freestyle. You're not just gonna, you're not gonna be able to do that until it's been squeezed out of you in many cases, being nervous, being in front of a crowd of people, a lot of times that's when the best stuff comes out. And so I would encourage you, if you are really struggling and you're working on your dancing, competing can really help you. But again, you don't want to take it too seriously. Some of the things that I did when I looked at competitions and I said, you know what, I think I want to do this one. I think I want to enter it. The thing, There were a couple of things that I looked at before I entered competition. Number one, who's judging? Who's judging? That was my first question. And this is just a logical question. Then I had to jump into the next question. Do I actually like that person's dancing? That's a really good question. And I used to ask myself that. Did I really like that person's dancing? And if I didn't, then I usually wouldn't compete because I don't want them to be telling me stuff I already know about my own dancing but I'm, I don't really care about their opinion because I'm not aspiring to be that kind of dancer or emulate them per se. But then I also looked at something. Like, he's like, wait a minute. You know, I get it. Not everybody can still dance. Some people are older. Some people have been in the game for a long time. 
But my next question then has to go, what did this person actually contribute to the swing dancing art form? What do they contribute to the legacy? If I go and I look at videos and, and I see stuff that may have been original for their time, but I don't see a consistency of new ideas. I don't see uh, uh, just a variety of contribution and art. Then for me, I question, well, do I really need their opinion? Because clearly I might be contributing more than they are. So why would I consider it good or bad what they think? Right? So these are some of the logical questions you want to ask yourself before you jump into a competition and find yourself getting frustrated if you're not getting the results you want. Number one, ask. Why? Why is it good? Why is it bad? What would you like? Because most of it is subjective. But especially if you don't know why you're competing, you have to ask those questions. If you do know why you're competing, you definitely want to check out who's actually judging you. Those are the top things that I did. And when I won first place, it didn't matter sometimes because some of my favorite judges weren't judging me. I wanted to see what they thought about my dancing. I knew they would be honest about, you know, if I was solid on my control part. I wanted them to be honest about an idea I was working on and I finally was able to do it and I wanted to get a third party perspective on that idea to see if my intentions were actually delivered in a way where the audience could appreciate it and I could appreciate it. That's why I would compete. So I would encourage you, get out there, compete, you'll love it, but make sure you get context or it will frustrate you, trust me. So what did you guys think about this one? Who do you think should have won this competition? You heard it from me. I like the couple on the left, Christian and Jenny. I respect their dancing. Um, they're Midwest people like me. I live in the in middle of the United States. A lot of people um, where you guys are at, they don't even know where we live. We're like right in the heart. You got your New Yorks, you got your LAs, and we're like right, but right above Texas. And we're in Oklahoma. I'm in Oklahoma. We call it the head of Texas. Don't tell people in Texas that though. Um, but I think uh, Jenny and Christian, I think they were from St. Louis, uh, which again is, is very close to where I live. So um, let me know what you guys thought about their dancing in the comment section. Um, if you have not done this before, I encourage you to check out some of my free courses. Don't sit on the sidelines. Get in the game. Swing dancing is so much fun. Um, it can be easier than how it's been portrayed a lot of times. If you want a very simple streamlined approach, I've got a fundamentals membership below. You should check that out. It'll, show, it'll really help you circumvent a, a lot of unnecessary entanglements when it comes to your swing dancing journey. You wanna get good fast. You don't wanna take 20 years to figure out how to do a swing out, right? So with that said, check out my free courses. Check out the fundamentals membership. If I don't see you guys in class online, hopefully I get to see your comments in the reaction video comment section below. Take care.